Now learning physics will be great fun with a physics teacher. A solution to all problems in physics. The physics teacher. Four weightless rods of length L each are connected by hinged joints and form a rhombus. Hinge A is fixed and load is suspended to hinge C. Hinge D and B are connected by weightless spring of length 1.5 L in undeformed state. In equilibrium, the rod form angle 30 degree with the vertical. Then what is the time period of the oscillation of the mass? So here we have the situation. So these are the four rods, each of length L and this is the spring and the length of the spring is 1.5 L clear and the angle which these rods are making with the vertical is given equal to 30 degree so let this angle is alpha naught and this is 30 degree and this angle is in the situation of equilibrium clear so in order to solve this problem we have to first identify the concept to solve this problem so the underlying concept here is simply the time period as we have calculated in spring pendulum where we use this formula t is equal to 2 pi under root m by k where m is the inertia factor and k is the spring constant and while solving the problem of spring pendulum during equilibrium we used to write that mg is equal to kl where l is the equilibrium length and from here we substitute the value of m in this equation and finally we get the formula for the time period as t is equal to 2 pi under root l by g so following the same lines here we will try to solve this problem and one more thing you must remember that this formula appears only when the restoring force is of this situation that f is equal to minus kx so this k is spring constant and x is the uh, displacement from the mean position so in our problem here we don't know what is k here and what is the displacement from the mean position or we can write this formula in this form also delta f is equal to minus k delta of x clear so here i am going to use this basic concept in order to solve this problem so first of all we will try to find out the force that is acting in the spring or the restoring force that is acting on this mass which makes it to oscillate clear so for this assume that at any instant of time this angle is say alpha clear and the tension in the rod here is T as the rods are massless so the tension everywhere is same tension is same everywhere and as this angle is alpha at any instant of time so this angle is also alpha this angle is also alpha as this is a rhombus so the component of this tension along this line along this AC the component of this tension and the component of this tension so if this is point C so in this direction we have mg the weight this weight mg and in this direction we have t cos alpha and due to this t we have t cos alpha clear so the force exerted by the roads on the load the force the force exerted by 
the rods on the load on the load and that is equal to 2t cos of alpha clear so this is equation number one suppose now the force exerted by the rods on the spring so if this is angle alpha so this angle is 90 degree minus alpha so the component of this t component of this t along this direction component of this t along this direction will be so this is point b and the component of tension in this direction is t sin alpha and similarly due to this tension here the force along the spring is t sin alpha so we can say that the force exerted by the rod rods the force exerted by the rods on the spring on the spring and the force is say F2 and you can write it as 2t sine of alpha and let this is equation number 2 assume this to be equal to F1 clear now we know that from Hooke's law using Hooke's law we can write that F2 the force that will act in this direction that is the force in the spring or the restoring force is equal to K times the compression of the spring the compression of the spring clear k times the compression of the spring where k is the spring constant and we don't know what is the spring constant here now what is the compression here what is the compression of the spring so this is 1.5 l that is the uncompressed length of the spring so in order to calculate the compression so let this length this length is z so the total length of the spring in this situation is 2z clear now from this triangle from this triangle you can write that this z z is equal to l sine of alpha this is angle alpha clear so 2z will be 2l sin alpha so f2 is equal to k times 1.5 l minus 2z or you can write k into 1.5 l minus 2 into l sin of alpha clear so let this equation is equation number 3 now here as we have to find out the time period of oscillation of this mass so we are basically interested in this in this formula for force F1 that is acting on this mass M and for this we have to eliminate this T so in order to eliminate this T using equation 2 we can write this equation 1 as F1 equal to F2 by sine of alpha into cos of alpha and from this equation number 3 if we substitute the value of F2 so finally we will get F1 as K times 1.5 L cot of alpha minus 2 L K cos of alpha and let this equation is equation number 4 now this mass m is oscillating and due to its oscillation its height with respect to the equilibrium position will change
so in order to calculate the time period we have to calculate delta f that is the force acting on the load and we have to find that variation in height with respect to the equilibrium position clear so we have to find these two quantities next now this delta f we can calculate by differentiating this equation and in order to find this delta h we have to find its instantaneous uh, position or height with respect to this point a let as we have taken this angle alpha at an instant of time let this length this length from a to here is say y clear so from this triangle we can write y that is equal to l cos of alpha and the uh, distance of this mass from this point a at any instant of time is say h and that is equal to 2y and that is equal to 2l cos of alpha this is the distance of the mass at any instant of time with respect to point a clear so using this formula we can write the height of the load relative to the equilibrium position height of the load relative to the equilibrium position let this is h naught and we can write this as 2l cos of alpha naught clear and if we want to find the variation of this height with respect to the equilibrium position so we can write that delta h and that is equal to 2l minus sine of alpha naught into delta of alpha clear because as this spring gets compressed and have an expansion in order to have oscillation of this mass m so here this angle alpha will also change clear so when this alpha change or when this mass oscillates up and down so there is a variation in this angle alpha and there is a variation in this height so delta h is equal to 2l minus sine of alpha naught into delta alpha let this equation is equation number 5 so we have this equation number 1 equation number 2 3 4 and 5 now in order to get this delta alpha we differentiate this equation 4 and if we differentiate this equation 4 we will get delta f1 that is equal to 1.5 l k delta of cot alpha minus 2 l k delta of cos of alpha so in order to find this value of delta alpha we have to find this delta of cot alpha and delta of cos alpha and this is with respect to the equilibrium position so delta of cot alpha that is equal to d by d alpha cot of alpha into delta of alpha and with respect to the equilibrium position we can write this as differentiation of this cot alpha is 1 by sine square alpha so this is minus 1 by sine square alpha and with respect to equilibrium it is alpha naught and delta of alpha so this is delta cot alpha and this delta of cos alpha delta of cos alpha is equal to minus sine of alpha naught delta of alpha now substituting these two values in this equation we will get delta of f that is equal to minus 1.5 k l delta alpha divided by sine square alpha naught plus 2 k l sine of alpha naught delta alpha clear now we know that this alpha naught 
is equal to 30 degree so sine of alpha naught is equal to 1 by 2 and substituting this value of sine alpha naught 1 by 2 here so finally we will get delta f and that is equal to minus 5 k delta h so comparing this equation with delta f is equal to k delta x so the spring constant here the spring constant here is 5 k so the corresponding time period will be t is equal to 2 pi under root the inertia factor divided by the spring factor that will be 5 k now what is m what is m now in order to find this m we use this equation number 4 as under equilibrium this f1 this f1 which is acting here this f1 is equal to this mg so this f1 is equal to mg so f1 that is equal to 1.5 kl cot of alpha naught minus 2 kl cos of alpha naught and that is equal to mg so solving this we can write m from here as under root 3 by 2 into kl divided by g clear now substituting this value of m here in this formula so finally we will get the time period as 2 pi under the root root 3 by 10 l by g so this is the time period of the load 